After over 20 years, the Candyman is back on the big screen. So let's talk about it. Candyman is a soft reboot of the Candyman franchise, and what I mean by that is that it's intended to reboot the Candyman franchise and stand on its own as a story, but it is a direct follow-up to the original Candyman from 1992. Little background on my experience with the Candyman franchise, I hadn't seen any of them until about two weeks ago, and over the last two weeks I watched the previous three films, I watched all the special features, a bunch of interviews with Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen, and so I've tried to familiarize myself as much as I can with the franchise leading up to this new release. With that said, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what did you think about the new Candyman and what's your experience with the franchise prior to watching this film. With that said, let's get started with the good. First thing you gotta talk about this movie is that it is wonderfully and artfully shot. Everything is framed so intentionally. The shot selection is amazing. The way it transitions from shot to shot scene to scene done with so much intentionality, especially as you start getting into some of the kills and the way that it uses mirrors to show things that are happening, even as it's trying to communicate the transition of our lead character and kind of what's happening with him, it just subtly starts to reveal things in the background, but just enough that you're able to pick out on it that this is a movie that was everything was thought through as they were designing each one of these scenes and where to put the camera and how to capture everything. Along these same lines, the way they visualize the kills and the Candyman's handiwork just handled in a very cool way, whereas most movies do it kind of very point blank, slasher guys shows up, tears people up, or someone's standing there and suddenly a hook goes through them or something like that. This movie finds all these different ways to like subtly hint at what's taking place. So you're trying to piece together what you're seeing until you have the surprise of the actual murder taking place. And all that goes to the way these shots are framed, the use of mirrors, and just a very creative way of visualizing the way Candyman manifests himself in this world. There's even times where you think the scene is transitioning and in fact, we're seeing the end of the scene, which is a kill. And if you're not paying attention, you could miss it. And so like it trusts the audience with the framing of the shots to pay attention to the little details that are taking place. And since the series is so tied to folklore, urban legends and backstories, the movie finds a way to communicate a lot of that in different interesting ways besides just doing flashbacks. And so there's just a lot of artistic flares throughout the entire film. And as I mentioned before, this is a soft reboot. And so it's designed so that you can watch it having not seen anything in the past. It gives you everything that you need to know and all the ties to the original film are handled as some of the folklore inside of this movie, the same way that the original film had all this folklore and these backstories that were shared from decades past. That's what this movie does with the original film. And so it actually ties really nicely into the story but it's not just past stuff that happens, it actually intertwines into this narrative and sets some of this story in motion in interesting and creative ways. So it's respectful of the past, builds on the past, while not requiring you to see it. But with that said, I do recommend watching the 1992 film before you watch this one, because this one will essentially spoil that movie for you, so it makes sense to watch them in the proper order. And finally, I appreciate that it's a highbrow horror film and slasher. It's about a guy with a hook with a hand, slitting throats and running people through, but none of it's done for just schlock value, none of it's done winking at the camera. It takes the material seriously, tells it with a bunch of craftsmanship, and tackles certain social issues. But I also had a lot of problems with this movie, so let's move on to the bad. And the first thing that comes to mind here is that the breakdown of the characters is very unusual. And what I mean by that is our, our lead character is an artist, and so naturally you'd expect that he'd interact with a pretentious art critic at some point in time in the movie. Well, in this movie, three or four characters are pretentious art critics. And with the movie that doesn't have a particularly large cast, that means a large percentage of the cast are pretentious art critics. So whenever our character interacts with people, they're having these very highfalutin conversations about art that I just couldn't relate to or wasn't interested in. And it felt like these characters got very repetitious at a certain point in time. Another issue with the story is that it's only 91 minutes long and it feels like they really needed to flesh out the last 
20 minutes a bit more. As they start tying together all the side characters, the plots, the backstory, the new mythology, and the social commentary, it gets very rushed and cluttered in the last 15 minutes. And I was trying to piece it together as it just felt like it was trying to get to the next plot point to get to the big finale. And I think they needed to slow down on a lot of that to clarify exactly what was happening and why to make their statements at the end a little bit more meaningful. But at the end of the day, my biggest issue with this film is the handling of the social commentary itself. Now, of course, the original had clear political and social commentary, but it was subtext and it was communicated through story. There's a point in time in the original where Helen does say, two murders over there and cops do nothing, one white woman gets assaulted and we get arrests. That's a very clear political statement, but it was also driven by the plot, an action that takes place to her and her response to it to communicate that idea. In the new film, our main characters are introduced and they almost immediately break into a discussion about the racial implications of gentrification. And when they're not discussing gentrification, they're discussing our main character's art, which is mostly all based off racial oppression and inequality. The original film had undertones and subtext about inequality, but it was all driven by the story. Here, the characters are just sitting around in circles discussing gentrification, racial inequality, and police brutality from an ideological perspective. If you want to communicate a message through a film, awesome. Tell a story which challenges my understandings, my preconceived notions, and my experiences. Show me the world through someone else's eyes. One of the big adages of cinema is show, don't tell. Trust the audience to make the connections, understand, and draw their own conclusions. This movie doesn't trust its story to communicate its message or the audience to understand it. Therefore, everything is just explicitly stated. There's no room for interpretation. There's no subtlety or nuance. There's no room for a conversation with your friends afterward about what it all meant. No, the writers and the director just state what they're thinking, what they're trying to say in the most heavy handed way you can. And in case you didn't get it, the last 10 minutes of the film just double and triple down on their ideas to just slam it right there in your face. And it's frustrating because the movie was shot with so much delicate precision, but the social commentary was just so heavy handed. Real quick, before I give you my final score, be sure to join me down below in the comments section. Let me know what did you think about the new Candyman and what is your experience with the past films? Also, I will be ranking all four Candyman films in just a couple of days, but if you want more horror content from me now, check out that playlist right up there where I've ranked a bunch of the classic horror franchises. While I appreciated all the craftsmanship that went into staging the shots, presenting the kills in an interesting way, and tying back to the 1992 film, I wish that same craftsmanship had been applied to how it communicated its message. Rather than stating it so overtly, I wish it had been told throughout the story. Overall, I'm giving Candyman a C plus on the entertainment scale, it's a 5.5, and I can't give a single recommendation on this one because it's going to be polarizing. If you really like socially aware horror films with a very clear message, you'll probably absolutely love this film. If you prefer your social commentary to be subtext and undertones and a bit more subtle, this movie will probably be a bit too heavy handed for you. If you want more horror content from me, check out that playlist right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.